Supply for labor. To start off with looking at an individual supply curve, you might notice that it looks a little bit different than what we've been talking about with supply curves in the product market. And it's shaped like a supply curve for product curve, except at a certain point as wages continue to increase, you're willing to supply less labor because you earn more money per hour or more per unit of time. So what you're saying is eventually when I make let's say right about here is if I make a hundred dollars an hour I don't need to work nearly as many hours so I start to decrease my hours as wage continues to go up to 120, 130, 150 per hour because I don't need to work as many hours to get the same or even to get more uh, total wages. A market supply curve though is what we're used to just the upward sloping supply curve and the reasons we can shift supply either to the left to decrease or to the right to increase is either through population, more people, more supply of labor, preferences for jobs. For example, there's been an increasing amount of women in the workforce since 1960 that would increase the supply of jobs. And also, if we look back farther, there are less supply of workers than before because we've excluded children from the market uh, for the most part. And time in school or training. More educated populace, less supply of lower skilled jobs or the labor for lower skilled jobs. One of the types of unions works to affect supply directly and that type of union, we'll, again we'll discuss this at a later time, unions altogether, but it's called the exclusive union. And what this type of union does is works to restrict the supply of workers so that there is less competition and therefore it drives wages up. Um, an example of this would be the teachers unions across the United States generally require licensure to become teachers. So if you have to, you know, have one more government regulation or one more hoop to jump through, there's a lower supply of workers because there's just some other hurdle standing in their way. So not everybody in the United States can just apply for a teacher's position or start practicing law, for example, because there's usually some sort of licensure system set up to restrict the supply Therefore, there's less competition for the jobs, and it drives wages up of those who do get hired in the market.